I'm Professor Lando, and uh, I see we have some new students um, here at Ligma University. Got him. What are we talking about today? Title of the class is MILFS 101, a holistic approach to the question, why does Pixar animate their moms like that? Why are they so thick? And, and you know, Pixar is, is, is kind of, listen, it's the name grab, I know, but not just Pixar, not just Pixar, but a lot of, of mediums, animated mediums. And uh, I, I just want to say, I know some of you are taking this class because it's a requirement. I know a portion of you are here because um, you're majoring in a pogology, right? We have some pogology majors, some uh, thickology majors in here. This is one of the intro classes that everyone has to take with the MILF 101 class. P-O-G, no, sorry, common misconception with the pogology major. Uh, it's P-A-W-G, right? Clapicus knows. Oh, I know you know. I know you know. Okay, so I, th I think with, with all my lectures, I think we, we have to, the, where do we start? What is a MILF? Huh? Is that, is that milk with an F? Is that what you call spoiled milk? Right? Urban Dictionary says, it's a mom I would like to frick. I think this is the most generally accepted definition. Or mature. There is also a second definition, you know, it's important to cover misconceptions and alternative interpretations, even if it's not related at all, because you want to be sure if you're talking about MILFs, you're talking about MILFs, okay? Because the second definition is the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, who are based in the southern Philippines and were created in 1978. And their primary goals are to establish an independent homeland governed under Sharia law for the Moro peoples. This is not, that is not what we're talking about today. We are not talking about the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. And probably we will never ever talk about the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. But it's important to note that that MILF also stands for that. And we might get confused. One night, you know, you're by yourself, you're Googling, or you know, you're, you're searching up MILF. Eventually you find yourself on some kind of watch list. I don't know. MILFs. Okay, well actually, let's start there. Did you see, ah, uh, classic mistake. Classic, it's, you can't fault anyone for it because I make the same mistake. I just made it right now. I said MILFs. I think what the plural is, I think technically speaking, is it MILFs or MILFs? Mandela effect? Perhaps. I want to say MILFs, but I think technically speaking, it is MILFs. Let's use something that is um, transitive in nature. Elf. Plural. Elves. You can't say elf is elves and at the same time MILF is MILFs. It's got to be MILFs. It's got to be. We don't want to be an appropriator of MILFs just to, you know, just to be hip with our MILFs. To truly appreciate versus appropriate MILFs, we need to understand the history. So we're going to start with a little bit of history. And we're going way back. Oedipus Rex is the, is the title of a tragedy written by Sophocles, I, I, I maybe think is how you pronounce it, it might be, uh, who was a, I believe he was Greek, uh, a tragedian, Trage tragedian, he wrote tragedies, and Oedipus Rex is a tragedy. About what? A, a small excerpt from uh, Wikipedia. Oedipus accidentally fulfilled a prophecy that he would end up killing his father and marrying his mother. Yeah, tragedy, maybe, depending who you are, maybe not so much a tragedy. Oedipus Rex, again, title of a Greek tragedy, Sophocles where he married his mother and killed his father, Jocasta. And what's the takeaway here? Jocasta may be the progenitor MILF, the very first MILF, the progenitor MILF herself, Jocasta. Oedipus is the name of the character. You know what Oedipus means? Let me tell you, swollen foot. And I think we know what that means. That's not the only thing that's swollen. So we have Jocasta. And this is the starting point here. That was the past. We're moving into the present and the, we're kind of getting more into the meat of what I'm talking about. The focus of this class 
is the animated Pixar films, animated cartoons. I'm a visual learner. So I'm, a, I'm gonna show you some examples of what are commonly agreed upon um, MILFs. Okay, so we have some, we have some MILFs here. We have Mrs. Turner from The Fairly Odd Parents. We have uh, Judy Neutron, Jimmy Neutron's mom. Um, we have this one, this one's a little rough, I know. This is, this is um, Danny Phantom's mom. This is, uh, that's Mrs. Incredible from The Incredibles. This one you might not recognize, or rather maybe I, I, it's hard to get this one across. By principle, I, I know the drawing's a little rough, but this is, this is Aunt Cass from Big Hero 6. So what do we notice? What is a MILF? It's the haircut. There's a general shape. I like to describe it as a bulbous shape. That ain't anything that's gonna be bulbous, you know what I'm saying, sheesh. Um, a bulbous shape in the hair. It's gotta be the hair. Dare you say the MILF cut? This is the foundation for the theorem I'm about to present. What makes a MILF MILFy? There's a concept. What is this right here? This right here is what we, what is in mathematics, the Fibonacci numbers commonly denoted as Fn function form a sequence called the Fibonacci sequence, such that each number is the sum of the two preceding ones starting from zero and one. Yes, I see you guys in the chat. You've done your, you've done your reading ahead of class like I told you to. This is also known as the golden ratio. As in, yes, this is a mathematical sequence, but they also, coming from Wikipedia, again, they also appear in biological settings. Surprisingly, time and time again, the Fibonacci sequence right here. Such as branching in trees, the arrangement of leaves on a stem, the fruit sprouts of a pineapple, the flowering of an artichoke, a nautilus shell, an uncurling fern, and the arrangement of a pine cone's brackets. Bracks, sorry. What the logical conclusion is, is that where do we find it? My God. My God. The MILF haircut is the golden ratio. It is ingrained biologically in our nature as the Fibonacci sequence is ingrained in biology. It's in nature, inescapable. The MILF haircut is the golden ratio. MILFs are biologically ingrained in our nature. Okay, and this is surprising. We can, we can extract this. We can go even further beyond a, a, amongst most enlightened academics. What is generally accepted to be the most attractive Pokemon? It's Gardevoir. Don't, don't deny it. Whether or not you are a proponent of the Gardevoir being the most attractive Pokemon, you cannot deny that Gardevoir is one of the most commonly accepted to be attractive Pokemon. And what do we see here? This is the connection. This is the aha moment. Gardevoir has the MILF haircut. And this is the connection. Why do people think Gardevoir is so hot? It's because they're, they're subconsciously being MILFed. Gardevoir has the MILF haircut. And going further, behold, the Fibonacci sequence is, prevails. You can't fight science. You can't fight science here. Why we like MILF so much? Why does Pixar animate their moms like that? What is the exact opposite of a MILF? Our own mother, ironically enough. And I would postulate that there is some sort of forbidden fruit type effect happening here. And, 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 and much like Oedipus, I, we can refer to another ancient story slash myth slash poem, a hymn, an ancient hymn. It's a hymn called Stacy's Mom by Fountains of Wayne. Uh, quote, Stacy's mom has got it going on. She's all I want and I've waited for so long. Stacy, can't you see? You're not the girl for me. I know it might be wrong, but I'm in love with Stacy's mom. Taboo, you notice, I know it might be wrong. And this is one of the most popular hymns across human civilization. You can, what, what is astonishing, you can go, there are these secluded, uh, uh, I, you know, it's, it's commonly known as primitive. You know, that's not, it's not exactly correct to call one civilization 
more or less civilized or primitive. That's a very outdated way of thinking. However, generally speaking, you know, it's known as quote unquote primitive societies. These societies, they're, they're secluded. They're, they're, they live on islands completely detached from other societies. They haven't interacted with any of these societies. They're completely secluded. And when researchers, when milfologists go to these islands to perform research for the first time, they, 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 what they, were they singing? Stacy's mom has got it going on. Blah, 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 blah. I know it might be wrong, but I'm in love with Stacy's mom. It's in our nature, biologically so. And it's, it is the taboo that makes it so much sweeter, much like the prohibition in the United States, the constitutional ban on the production, transportation, and the sale of alcoholic beverages via Wikipedia. There is a sort of mental prohibition and also like, like legit laws that, uh, that discourage motherly love. But another person's mom, Daisy's mom, Timmy's mom, Jimmy's mom, <laughs> Aunt Cass, that's a whole nother story. And I think we're getting into the root of it. What is the main demographic of cartoons and Pixar movies, especially in the 90s? Um, there is an argument to say cartoons aren't so much aimed at kids anymore, but definitely back then, the main demographic, kids. This is some messed up psychological manipulation that's going on here, but I'm recognizing it. And I think my paper on milfology that's gonna expose this is gonna get me black bagged. However, I, it has to be said, who is the most important person in a child's life? Their mother. And after years, again, not in, not in, not in a, an attractive manner, not, not in, in an intimate manner. However, after years of consuming milfy media, you know that scene where Mrs. Incredible gets stuck in the door? What's up with that? I was like, how old was I? I was a kid when they did that. But, mm. Now I know. But after years of consuming milfy media, these kids, these childs of Pixar, that's the name, that, that's it. Then that's the, name of the, that's the name of the Netflix documentary based on the lectures of Professor Lando coming to Netflix, the childs of Pixar. They grow up to be milf lovers and the cycle repeats. And we've come full circle. And, and that, 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 I think we've gotten to the crux of what a milf is. However, there is another question and, and this is, maybe I, we should have included this in the beginning of the lecture, but does a MILF have to literally be a mother? I'm very proud of you, Asteroid. I'm very proud of you, extra credit. If you remember at the beginning of my lecture, the definition via Urban Dictionary of a MILF, mom I'd like to frick or mature. And if you're paying attention, Aunt Cass from Big Hero Sis, not Mom Cass. So basically, let me just say it explicitly. I do not believe that they literally have to be a mother to be a MILF. So let's apply this to real life. Aunt May from Marvel's Spider-Man with Tom Holland. Marissa Tomei, if that ain't a MILF, I don't know what is. Marissa Tomei, sheesh. And I think that, that just settles the deal right there is a definitive answer to, does a MILF have to be a mom? No, aunt. God damn. <clears throat> <sighs> okay, what's going on? On another note, not just, it, uh, like a, a MILF doesn't have to be a mom. However, not just any attractive woman is a MILF. We need standards, we need boundaries, we need to draw the line. Maybe I can't be the one to say exactly where, but I can say there needs to be a line, at least. A somewhat contradictory concept here I'm gonna to present to you. MILFs are not directly, intentionally created attractive, first and foremost. It's an underlying attractiveness. The maturity acts as a veneer for the beauty underneath. And I know that sounds contradictory because, listen, the people animating Mrs. Incredible in that scene where she looks at she looks in, in the mirror. If that's not intentional, I don't know what is. But it's, it's more about the entire package. I think firstly, we have to say that the main part, you know, of course the haircut is a must. Fibonacci sequence. Nurturing motherly figures. Who is that? Jimmy's mom has got it going on. 
Carl Weezer. Carl Weezer, our king. And it's not just for funsies. There, there's an important point to make with Carl Weezer. His desire for Jimmy's mom is anything but veiled at all. And he's, he's thirsting for it. It's, it's very meta because MILFs and cartoons are meant for the viewers. They know it's a thing. Mrs. Incredible, you know, Big Hero 6 comes after The Incredibles, but they're like, ah, we got our MILF. But here we have the MILFer within the same cartoon acting as our proxy as the viewer. Very meta, very important to recognize that Carl is, is just definitely, just, just an important part of, of MILFology as a whole. We're gonna be doing a pop quiz uh, class. I hope you're paying attention. Miss Bellum, also from the Powerpuff Girls. I am very disappointed. Not a MILF. Not a MILF. No, it's the intention. It is the intention. It's, it's, it's hard to describe the feeling, but first and foremost, dangerous territory. Just because she's thick does not mean she's a MILF. It's not the MILF vibe. She's sexy, but not, she doesn't have the vibe, the nurturing. She may be nurturing, but she doesn't give off that, that motherly vibe. She's almost too sexy. Not that that is a problem. You don't have to be too sexy to be a MILF. I mean, I think that's obvious. But in this case, the intention matters and the intention is not to be milfy. That's just, that's just, that's what more can I say other than that? Mm -hmm.